Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we are going to be jumping into an area that I've sort of wanted to go into for a while, sort of being the operative phrase, which is the incredible realm of One Piece cosplay. Now luckily there is a convenient opportunity to do just that, as the One Piece Cosplay King Grand Prix, which was an event in association with the World Cosplay Summit, has just been held in order to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the One Piece anime. As a result, 20 finalists were selected from around the world, and we are going to go through them here. Now at this point I should say that at the time of this recording I have not seen any of these. The following 20 images have been compiled for me in no particular order, except that I believe the overall winner will be at the end. So this is very new for me because generally I thoroughly script videos. So yeah, let's see how this goes and hopefully it won't be a complete disaster. And with that in mind, let's get straight into things with entry number one. Holy hell. Oh my god. This is a pretty shockingly high standard to begin with. This law in my eyes is pretty damn spot on perfect, but being the annoying person I am, I really have to compliment just how well lit this photo is. Especially that cold steely blue backlight that gives this guy a zin from Bulgaria, by the way. All the depth in the world. Literally all of it. Now I can't use depth in any of the shows I do because it's all here. But this is really cool. You can never go wrong with any character who wields a sword. Brilliant work, good sir. And next up, we have the one and only Nico Robin, which I initially love because it shows us exactly what Robin should look like if her body was drawn in proper proportions. But essentially, it's a simple and effective cosplay. And what I'm looking at right now is actually two different outfits. I'm seeing the Strong World Robin and Water 7 Robin, both of which look pretty fantastic. But I have to say that the wig is absolutely on point in both. And you know, there is nothing worse than a fantastic cosplay being brought down by an unconvincing wig, but that is not the case here. Solid Robin. Monkey D. Luffy, of course. All right, so well, this is another one of those cases that proves that lighting is everything. Once again, I'm looking at two different pictures, which I assume will be the standard for the rest of the entries at this point. But the Luffy in his immediate post time skip outfit on the wanted poster absolutely blows me away. So much so that it's almost hard to believe that it's the same cosplayer donning the dress rosa outfit. Guess you know what? It almost certainly is not the same photographer who took those pictures. I'll say that much. But really both are fantastically simple and effective Luffy cosplays. It's just that one is lit from an interesting angle and one is lit in a really, really flat and kind of boring manner. Still, great job, Harukan, I think it is from Japan. Uh, all right. Now I said before that you can't really go wrong with any character who wields a sword. And I, I suppose I'd like to amend that statement because you definitely can go wrong by not showing the sword. Well, to be clear, this looks pretty damn fantastic close up, but it's hard to really judge the cosplay without seeing most of the costume. Plus the photo quality is incredibly grainy like this was clearly not a photo shoot it's just a selfie on a phone camera or something so it could be really fantastic i don't know and you know what what's what's this dude's name let's see if there are any proper photos of this out there and it turns out not really I found another selfie, but I also stumbled upon this shot of him on a hotel room bed, making Mihawk look like a very high class escort, but it does seem to be a pretty damn good job of the costume. I think it just suffers from any real lack of photography and of course, the lack of sword. Ow, ow, ow! I really love a good Frankie. And I'm pretty certain I've seen this guy floating around on the internet before, but El Supernova from Argentina, you are just amazing. I'm one of those people who really love Frankie's post time skip design, and it is so amazingly cool that you have managed to capture his proportions so well. The only thing I'm less keen on once again is the quality of the pictures. And I mean, actually the one that isn't the one to poster is kind of nice. It has a great angle, which really sells the illusion of how huge your Frankie is. It's just the location, the lighting, the quality, and the random bits of blur that exist for, for for whatever reason that lets it down. And yes, I know at this point, it's becoming pretty apparent that I am a true photography snob, but damn it, this cosplay deserves some proper epic treatment. And I really hope that it gets it at some stage. Ah, Perona, this is fantastic. I love everything about this, especially the wanted poster image. The pose is just so, so wonderfully dynamic. Even the wig is up in the air like a character in motion. It makes me wonder if she like flung her hair up for that well-timed shot or if it had to be stuck up to get this picture. And I guess speaking of the wig, I can only imagine that mimicking Perona's hair must have been a nightmare, as well as the supreme attention to detail on the rest of the outfit. I mean, ugh. It's like most female characters in One Piece have very simple costumes, I feel, for the large majority of the time. But Perona certainly is not one of them. So Kalsara from Germany, very, very well done. Probably definitely my favorite so far. Oh wow, all right. Well, this is pretty timed with what I just said because when it comes to One Piece cosplay, Nami is usually a pretty simple one to achieve. Her outfits generally consist of one or two core elements, many of which don't uh, don't comprise a lot of fabric. And as a result, it's, it's actually kind of difficult to comment on a whole lot, except that the wig is very nicely done. And I also like the attention put into the log pose. The climb attacked, while I wish it wasn't just a blue stick, I also understand because immediately post time skip is when the climb attacked was definitely at its most aesthetically boring. Other than that, the photography is top notch with a beautiful dramatic 
perfect state for the wanted poster, and a cool kind of blue and orange lighting effect thrown into the full body shot. I guess it's just one of those things where I personally find it a bit more difficult to give as much respect to a cosplay like this, as opposed to say the Frankie one we just saw. I'm not saying that effort hasn't gone into this, it certainly has, it's just that Nami doesn't give you much to work with. Ah. Sakazuki. Dre fan from Singapore. This, this is superb. I think there are certain characters in One Piece that are very difficult to capture and the Admirals definitely fit that bill because they are a larger than life presence both figuratively and literally. But this Sakazuki looks seriously intimidating and I love that he was able to get a shot in an ornate Admiral style chair. It really completes the illusion. But I mean, if, if I was going to be a dick, I might point out that Sakazuki only grew a beard post time skip, whereas this is definitely his Aka Inu era outfit. But we're not going to do that, primarily out of the fear that Dreyfan will track me down and magma fist me through the chest. <laughs> yeah. Well, moving right along with that uh, train of thought, we have Port Gasty Ace. And this looks pretty spectacular. The hat is certainly my favorite part. And there's some great attention to detail with Ace's messy, but in a way structured type of hair. I have to say though, Ace is probably the male equivalent of Nami in terms of cosplay. There's really not a whole lot to it, especially because neither of these pictures even show his lower body, which is where the, uh, the actual clothes are. But just as with the Nami cosplayer we saw before, the minimal elements that do exist are done to perfection. Like I could see this guy playing Ace in a live action one piece, which is surely one one of the ultimate compliments in the cosplay world. Aha! I was wondering how long it would be before the inevitable Zoro popped up. Turns out, about this long. This outfit seems really well put together, although I don't recall Zoro's shoes being that super, super shiny. And what I really want to know is if Dragon or Doragon from the UK manages to keep his left eye closed at all times whilst embodying Zoro. This is also another one of those situations where I think you really need a proper photo shoot with a background that isn't just a, a flat gray mess. The Pirate Empress Boa Hancock. Another fantastic entry with probably the most piercing eyes we've seen so far, which is very important for a woman who can turn you to stone with minimal effort. But those earrings though, tiny, tiny detail, but so very well done. The saddest part here, I guess, is that I only have one picture essentially to go by. And once again, it definitely needs a, a proper shoot to really convey the full glory of this cosplay. Yo! <laughs> Look, just as with Frankie, a good Brook is a magnificent thing. I've seen a lot, and I mean a lot of Brook cosplays in my day, and many of them just plain cannot get the head right. And no matter how good the rest of the cosplay is, it just doesn't quite make up for it. But this is probably one of, if not the best Brook cosplay I have ever seen. Especially because it looks like Kiriskaz from Russia has multiple Brook heads to swap in and out depending on the context of the moment, which is just great. Soul King Crown is also fantastic. One of my favorite hats in the entire series. And uh, yeah, I... I want it. Sindri, all right, that was unexpected. Of all of the characters in the series that I often that I often just plain forget exist, Sindri definitely lands on that list. So lots of respect initially for a character that requires you to zombify yourself, which is a pretty gigantic makeup endeavor and can often end up looking quite inconsistent and spotchy, but that certainly is not the case here. I think the cosplayer, I, uh, to be honest, I can't read kanji well enough to save my life, but she has done a great job of capturing Sindri's signature emotionless nature. The only thing that could have possibly made this cosplay any better would be a pile of plates ready to be thrown at a moment's notice. <laughs> All right. Oh, sorry, Perona, but, uh, but we have a new favorite. And while I thought Sindri was unexpected, I'm not actually sure if I've ever seen a Miss Monday cosplay before. And after this, I don't think I will ever have a need to. This is perfection. And you know what? This probably actually would have been quite difficult to put together because that exact pattern and cut of the dress is, it's very unique. Once again, the photography snob within me wants to see this in a better context though, maybe surrounded by giant cactuses and some nice whiskey peak lighting. Captain Usopp. Actually, my mistake, that's God Usopp in the one to post a picture. And from what I can make out, this is a damn fine job. Usopp is difficult, very difficult. Not necessarily because of anything he wears, but because of that damn nose and how hard it is to make it look not shit. But Don Lawless has done flawless, Lee, in that regard. Full respect for constructing Usopp's dress for as a headgear as well. I know I just said that Usopp's outfits aren't generally all that complicated, outside of like the super detailed movie ones, but this piece of headgear is a great exception to that. So well done, sir. Sanji. With this, I think we have all the straw hats now. And wait, no, no, we haven't We haven't seen a chopper yet. In any case, Aki from Portugal has pretty well nailed the star chef in both his regular attire as well as his whole cake island garb. I also really like the lighting of the wanted poster shot. There's a nice warm touch to it, very much evoking the sense of fire and passion that Sanji is very much famed for. And here we go. Now we have a full complement of straw hats. And this chopper is amazing. Horn Point is a stupidly ambitious form of chopper to choose to recreate. And I have no idea how crafting something so big 
it could comfortably stay on one's head, but I'm going to assume that Q has successfully accomplished it. Plus the fur and the hat and just, just the everything. I think this is one of the best cosplays we've seen, if only for its logistic glory. But also it's probably the only Chopper cosplay I've ever laid eyes on that actually looks like Chopper. And that is a fantastic achievement. Oh wow, wow. So many longtime viewers of the channel will know that Sabo isn't a particular favorite character of mine, but this is undeniably awesome. This is, it's incredible. I actually think that Eugene Fei and the photographer have made Sabo look even cooler than he has ever appeared in the manga. There's just something about the once again messy but structured hair, the overall outfit, and the perfect expression of the cosplayer that makes this a phenomenal effort. I mean, if I hadn't been told in advance that the very last image I'd be seeing was the winner, I probably would have guessed at this one, to be honest. And it sets up some pretty damn high expectations for the eventual winner, which I now cannot wait to see. But before we get to that though, we have one more finalist and it is Smoothie, yowza. Well, the factor that is certainly the most important to nail in regards to Charlotte Smoothie is undoubtedly the illusion of leg. And honestly, short of Pantorona actually being a member of the Longleg tribe, I'm not sure how she's done this so fantastically, but here we are. There's also some fine work on the tattoo, the core outfit, and I also very much appreciate the glass of liquid by her side. Absolutely fantastic. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the winner of the One Piece Cosplay King Grand Prix. Eustace Captain Kid. Man, that arm is amazing. Now this is one that I have seen in the past, actually. I was astounded by it then, and I continue to be astounded by it now. Johnny Lab from Italy has put in an incredible effort with this cosplay. There's really nothing I can fault. The costume is detailed to perfection, and he is even able to capture the menacing kid expression. And while I am still kind of surprised that the Sabo cosplay didn't win, especially considering his absurd popularity in Japan, I am really glad that this took the crown. It's well-deserved, and in my opinion, stands at the pinnacle of cosplay. But that pretty much does it for the One Piece Cosplay King Grand Prix. Not the sort of thing I'd usually do on the channel, but I saw it and thought it might be fun to highlight this aspect of the series for a change. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but applied to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigan retakes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on this One Piece cosplay, or even with your own favorite One Piece cosplayers. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.